Well, it looks like I'm gonna be giving the Julia Quad a little more of a challenge than I thought. Wow, it consumed just about all of it. All I want in the trunk, the rest, these crushable things, what I want inside the cabin. Man, it can handle a full-size Costco run. That is impressive. Hey crew, I've got the key to that Alfa Romeo Julia Quadrifolio. And today we're gonna see what it's like to live with, beginning with remote start. After that brief burst of excitement on startup, the Julia Quad has settled down to a very mellow idle here. And I wanna check out the spacing in my driveway. You can see I didn't really try all that hard with a parking job. It's sitting about a foot in from the edge, parked next to a small SUV, Kia Sportage, that my wife is reviewing, that's parked a few inches in from the edge. And even with that lackluster park job, there's still plenty of room to walk between the vehicles or in the case of my family, wheel a stroller. And in terms of length, we've got a lot of space between the back of the car and the garage doors, or even to walk between this hedge and the car. And up front, that doesn't mean the nose is hanging off. It's still back from even the gutter at the front of my driveway. Man, I love this Verde Montreal color. Just beautiful. And I like the updated headlights for 2024. What do you guys think of those? Also, can't miss the optional carbon fiber roof with little water droplets from the dew of the morning. After remote starting the Julia, I can unlock the front doors just by putting my hand on the handle and then opening the doors. Wow, that's the first defined notch, but yeah, the door seems to hold itself in other places. And I don't think I can go to notch two before hitting the Kia. Still, notch one gives me plenty of room to get inside and easing on down, it's not that low. That's great. Hello, cabin crew. Thank you for joining me for this day in the life with the Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio. I'll begin by finding places for the items I've brought with me, my large water bottle and my GoPro accessories. Are these gonna go in the console? Not if I want that to close. Door pocket, maybe? Okay, can I just door test it to see if it'll stay? It's gonna eject it, all right. And here in front of the cup holders, I guess it could just sit there if I didn't have anything in the cup holders. Let's try this in combination with the large water bottle. That won't even fit in the cup holder, so I guess that's not a conflict. This is not gonna go in the console either. I guess this'll just sit there and this'll sit in the passenger seat until it flies forward. What else do I have with me? I've got sunglasses, I've got the key fob. This has a defined slot for it to go, that's nice. Sunglasses, well, nothing in the console. Might as well throw those in there. And my wallet, that can also go in the console. And then my smartphone can go in the wireless charging slot. That's actually a handy home for it. Yeah, so it seems like they thought of small item storage just fine, but not big ones for us Americans. And that leads to the question I'm going to have by living with the Julia Quad, which is by choosing the offbeat Italian, the Alfa Romeo, compared to the typical German performance sedan, the M3, the C63, the RS5 Sportback, are you penalized in any way that makes it difficult to live with this car? Now to actually get the Julia Quad going, I need to put my foot on the brake and I went for the start stop button here because I'm just so used to it being there, but it's actually this giant red button on the wheel, which after you do get used to it, is really nice because you're not hunting around for it there, it's just, right there at your fingertip every time. Now the vehicle is on, seat belt is going on as well, pulling it down into drive, releasing that parking brake, and pulling out of my driveway. Curb ramp helping with the clearance, but I think the Julia Quad would be fine anyway. <laughs> coffee. Coffee is first. Even if like me and you just get decaf, it's still the right way to start your day. And that will give me a chance to familiarize myself with the Julia around town, followed by promptly taking this vehicle to a good driving road. Because if you're considering the Julia Quad, it's probably because you've heard it's a good driver's car. So we're going to find that out. Then I'm going to get lunch. And after that, I'm going to check in on the practicality of this car. I'll get some groceries and I will attempt to install car seats in the back. If you're thinking about it as a family vehicle and you got young kids, 
You gotta have car seats. Then tomorrow, things get really good because I'm going to take this vehicle to go get my new car, my Dodge Demon 170 from the dealership. It'll be the first time I'm seeing it. I'm really excited and it will give me a chance to kind of simulate a commute in the Julia Quadrifoglio. I'll be joined by my friend, Charlie Dreyer. Then we'll wrap things up. I'll share my final thoughts and kind of answer the question of whether you can live with a Julia Quadrifoglio without any real nuisance. Here around town, how's that turn signal sound? Not too irritating. And coming down from speed, the brakes stick a little bit to finesse appropriately. Turning radius, that's quite good. And here in the natural drive mode, the normal drive mode, It's interesting, I can feel those gear changes from the eight-speed auto a little more perceptibly than most torque converter automatics. But in terms of power delivery, it's very smooth getting up to speed. No delay from the twin turbos. Yeah, even like slowing down. I'm not sure if it's brake pedal feel or, it feels more like transmission. There's, there's kind of defined lurches forward which is bizarre for a torque converter. That's normal for a dual clutch, not normal for a torque converter. In terms of ride smoothness, this adaptive suspension is doing a pretty good job here. Filtering out the road blemishes, but here we got some greats. I felt more of those, not super harsh though. I heard them more than anything else. These seats have a lot of adjustability. You can get them nice and low, comfortable. The bolstering on the side might be too much for some body type. For me, it's great. Yeah, okay, it's, it's pretty good to coast in. Easy to direct down the road. Steering feel, even at these low speeds, is excellent point it exactly where I want it to. Yeah, it's that first touch of the brake pedal. They're, they're a little grabby there. And now when you come to a full stop, the start-stop system is going to turn the vehicle off. And then when the light goes green, especially if you're quick to the throttle, it really does lurch you forward as it re-engages first gear. I may want to just turn start-stop off. Thankfully, that is a physical button here, so it's not something I have to hunt around in the menu for. Yeah, the brake, oh, okay, so again, the inconvenience of not having a spot for my water bottle. It's just gonna stay on the floor now. Where is that coffee shop? I never know where, <gasps> there it is. The Lost Bean. I found it. Get it, it's lost. <laughs> okay, let's park it. Let's just do that. Into reverse. Oh, the backup camera resolution is not very high. At least it has trajectory lines. And parking sensors. And a decent turning radius. There we go. Let's get some Java and forget about that terrible pun. <sighs> Got the coffee. Oh yeah. I don't have a place to put it, so that's gonna that's gonna go flying off too. Okay, so we've got two things now on the floor. That's irritating but that gives me a cup holder. <sighs> to the good roads. But first, a test of the front end clearance with that carbon fiber front splitter at a bit of an angle. <sighs> I'm okay. In the course of living with this vehicle, you might get a chance to do a zero to 60 run. And lo and behold, that day is today for me. And I've got my race box set up here conveniently to record. I'm gonna go into the race drive mode holding that dial and there is no launch control in this vehicle so i'm just going to brake boost it a bit off the line hopefully not breaking too much traction and here we go some tire spin there's 60 and 4.2 seconds and then de quick oh and it gets better <laughs> because finding the space and time to do zero to 60 runs is going to be difficult but coming up with an excuse to take the Julia Quad out on the weekends for some fun. Oh, it's much more justifiable. 
because this thing is a blast. The steering is so quick and accurate and the chassis just responds instantly. Those brakes that were a bit grabby around town are now providing this incredible bite to slow the vehicle before corners. And that twin turbo V6 is just raring to go, pulling you out of the curves. Manual mode is an even greater thrill because these giant aluminum paddles are so fun to actuate and prompt insanely quick gear changes for a torque converter. I mean, the whole car <laughs> is so much more fun now. It's easy to justify the stuff that's a bit irksome around town when this is the level of performance you get on the weekends, or even, I mean, it might be worth it, taking that long way home from work. <laughs> Tight curves, long sweepers, doesn't matter. The Julia Quad just swallows it all and spits out driving satisfaction. Is that weird? Doesn't matter. That'll work up an appetite. And after staring at these Italian flag colors behind the gear selector all day, all I can think about is Italian food. Specifically, I really want pizza. Well, off camera, I just had a good excuse to use this horn. And it did prove to be loud enough to get their attention. Just didn't stop them from cutting me off. And the frustrations continue because my favorite Italian food restaurant doesn't open until five. So I have to go with plan B. Biology. Oh yeah, it's pizza time. Oh, I fought the pizza and the pizza won. I can't just sit here all day and wallow in defeat. I've got errands to run. Yeah, the fam's running short on supplies, so it's time to restock at Costco. Oh my gosh, why didn't I get pizza here? Well, it looks like I'm going to be giving the Julia Quad a little more of a challenge than I thought. It was a full shopping run today. And I left my tennis rackets in here. Okay, so these are the first things that are going to have to go. And then, let's see how much of this is going to fit before I have to fold down these seats. Wow. It consumed just about all of it. All I want in the trunk, the rest, these crushable things, I'm going to want inside the cabin. Like back here. And, surprise, surprise, they're going to the passenger footwell, along with the pizza and the water bottle. And just a reminder, friends, don't be like that. Put your heart away. Oh, the walk was so difficult. Okay, so it looks a little like I live out of this Alfa Romeo now, but man, it can handle a full-size Costco run. That is impressive. So this Julia Quad can handle curves. It can handle Costco, but can it handle car seats? That's what I have to find out next. One, two sets of lower latch anchors and one, two, three top tethers. My kids are little, so they've got rear facing car seats relying on the lower latch anchors for them. I already got the first one installed really easily because of the access height and the fact that these latch anchors are exposed and the covers aren't loose. They stay in place. You don't have to put them in doors or otherwise lose them. Now onto the second one. That's the second seat in, but it does appear to be touching the seat back a little bit. So I either have to slide the seat forward or adjust the back angle. I'm gonna take it out of the leg room so I can see a bit of daylight there. That works. What does that do to my driving position though? Mm, I mean, obviously leg room isn't quite what I'd like, but this is, this is workable. What about the passenger side? Looks like I'm just barely clear of the car seat there. And, oh, it's pretty good. I mean, I'm a little more upright than I'd like, and if I did go forward to give me more back angle, I wouldn't have enough leg room. So I would say at six feet tall, I am the upper limit of what you can accommodate for car seats. Anyone taller is not gonna be happy here. And that's gonna about do it for the practical tests of the Alfa Romeo Giulia Quad. Now let's hop ahead to tomorrow when I go pick up my Demon 170. Charlie and I 
don't really have a commute in what we do. So this is as close to a simulated commute as we're gonna get uh, on our way to go pick up my long-awaited Dodge Demon 170. At these speeds, certainly, this is very quiet and comfortable. How do you feel about the seats? Seat seems good upon initial impression. I've got up and down over on the passenger side. I know that's important for yeah. a lot of people is sometimes the passenger gets skimped yes. upon and you don't often have passenger impressions on your on your day in the lights. Yeah. How so about the lumbar that. situation? Lumbar, first of all, not many good places for a cup holder. Oh, no go. no bottle holder in the yeah. side, but I do have four-way lumbar over here. So oh, sweet. Good. You get four-way? That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, no, Usually they, they skip that. on that. They'll get right. like the passenger maybe two-way, sometimes no way. Yep. Here in the exhaust a little bit, but it doesn't seem drony yet. No. I mean, I, I'm mostly off-throttle here because we're kind of on a downhill, but like even if I give it a little bit of throttle, yeah, and that's, that's pretty mellow. You're, you're driving a, a sports sedan. You want to remember that you paid extra to get the, the badge on the side. Yes. Do you have adaptive cruise control, which I can trigger on here? On there. Set it. And then I can set the following distance. What I don't have is anything like a steering assistance. I just have a lane departure warning system. So actually, I have people on both sides of me. But uh, once this Tesla passes, I can demo that. Yeah, there we go. Oh, it did correct me. So it's not a like a hands-free centering, but it will bring you back into the lane if you depart. It's nice to have those things. Oh yeah, what about the sun visors? Oh, not full extension. Mm. I mean, it gives you a little extra something something, but... That's, that's kind of inexcusable. Listening for the NVH level at a higher rate of speed. Just heard a... That was a louder road surface back there very briefly. But on this quieter tarmac, I'm still hearing tire noise, but the dual pane glass is definitely cutting down on wind noise. I'd say it's pretty quiet for the 80-ish thousand dollar price point. Yeah, I'd say it's appropriate. Yeah. It's, it's not egregious. I would say a, a German car might be a little bit quieter at these speeds. Yeah. But at the end of the day, this is a visceral sedan. It's yes. something that they kind of expect the driver to always be aware that they're driving the car. Yes, and I am always aware that I'm driving the 505 horsepower Alfa Romeo Giulia Quad because at any point in time I have the passing power. <laughs> and the overrun. My goodness, <laughs> the, the fart can from the back of that was a very pleased, the nicest flatulence I've ever heard in my life. And oh. gosh, this thing rips. Yeah, I wouldn't worry about any gap that you spot. You're driving you're like, oh, I think I can make it there. This is not quite at the level of like a Model 3 performance in terms of instantaneousness, but I mean, you just, you get there. You get there in a hurry. And I can see out of it very easily as well. Like forward visibility is excellent. The windows are nice. Of course, being a sedan, we don't have that, you know, giant raised cowl at the back. So the blind spot of the seat pillar is small and we've got standard blind spot monitoring. I would love commuting in this, I'll be honest. All right, we've made it to Coastline Dodge here in San Juan Capistrano. After you. Thank you. And there she is. Oh my gosh. Plum crazy. And I asked them not to wash it or do anything like that, by the way. That's why we've got the, the yellow caps on the front and some water spots, but I am... Look at these tires! Mickey Thompson, drag radials. This is a street legal tire. I can't not like just obsess over this. Oh my gosh. The plum crazy in that. I can't believe I'm gonna be able to drive this home. Look at that. Oh my gosh. I can't wait to fire this thing up. Okay. This is gonna be my first startup of my Demon 170. Yes, I've left the plastic on the seat for right now. I'll take time to take all that off later. <sighs> Windows cracked a little bit. Deep, menacing. Right now it's saying I've got 900 horsepower. There's a little bit of ethanol detected, but uh, when that's full E85, we're gonna have 1,025 horses. Into reverse, plastic on this as well. Oh, I can just dispatch with that. Backup camera is as terrible as I remember it always being in Challengers and Chargers. <laughs> okay, I don't want to spoil all the Demon 170 content that I do have coming up. 
So let's hop back to the Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio and continue. I'll tell you one thing I'm not looking forward to with the Dima 170, and that's going to be the cost to fill it up. But let's talk fuel economy for this Giulia Quad. The EPA rates it at 17 MPG city, 25 highway, and 20 combined. I've been seeing 15.8 MPG with a lot of enthusiastic driving. But if we got that 20 MPG rating with this 15.3 gallon tank, we'd have around 306 miles on a single tank. And with the price of premium fuel being $4.95, it would cost high 70s to fill up this tank. And uh, does it have capless fueling? No, it doesn't. What are you doing, Stellantis? Would you look at that? The rainstorm came a full day early. You can hear those water droplets pelting off the carbon fiber roof. All right, I'm going to summarize my thoughts on what it's like to live with the Alfa Romeo Giulia Quad. And at the beginning of this video, I wondered aloud whether choosing the slightly offbeat Italian sports sedan compared to more traditional Germans like the BMW M3 or C63 AMG or Audi RS5 Sportback comes with a real deal breaker penalty. And I'm happy to report that after living with this vehicle, there's not really any one big issue that undermines the entire vehicle proposition. Though there are a lot of small things that in combination might be too much for some people. I'm referring to things like the tech being somewhat dated and the brakes being kind of grabby and the transmission not being terribly smooth and the loose item storage, at least for large things, being somewhat lackluster. And on the flip side, the ride is smooth, the seats are comfortable, the visibility is excellent, the look is distinctive, it's reasonably practical, and it is a riot and a half to drive, especially in the right environment. So I think if viewed holistically, the Alfa Romeo Giulia Quad is more likable than not to live with. And to put it another way, this juice is most certainly worth the squeeze.